people, they act like they only believe in empiricism. And empiricism, we're talking about accepting uh, knowledge or producing knowledge just from the senses. So a lot of people get hung up about revelation or about religion or about God or about the afterlife because, well, I can't see it. I can't hear it. I can't read it. I can't witness it, right? But people are being selectively skeptical, right? Because they don't adhere to this strictly in their own lives, right? You've, you believe in Papua New Guinea. You've never been there. You've never seen it, right? But enough people have been there and have seen it that you take it based off of fact. You're not actually going to track those people down and interview them. No, you're ready to, you're prepared to accept that it exists. The, you know, the, the, the writing of the constitution and, you know, the whole story or, you know, you know, the battle of Concord, all these sorts of things that belong to history. The vast majority of people, they're going to accept them as fact, accept them as having really happened because other people were there and other people reported it and other people did the work to verify it, right? And so why don't we have the same relationship towards faith or religious claims, right? You've got religion X, Y, and Z, and each of them claims to represent a divine communication, okay? Well, let's think about what sort of evidence would be required to determine whether it's a, div it's a divine communication or not. What sort of things would we expect to see? We would expect to see a certain amount of coherence, right? It wouldn't contradict itself. We would expect to see some sort of um, miraculous information in the sense that something that human beings couldn't know, whether it was historical or whether it was uh, scientific or something that was indicated, maybe predicted, or maybe um, uh, indicated that they had no means of of knowing at that time, right? These sorts of things. We can talk about it. It's an open conversation. And then after that, you have to be able to actually look and go into them and see, well, okay, this particular religious uh, tradition or or document that claims to be uh, genuine revelation from, from the divine, well, it contradicts itself here, here, and here. And then that involves actually getting into a tradition, and there go there's going to be other people say, well, no, that's not an actual contradiction. You're misunderstanding it, or, or et cetera, et cetera. And you have to do the work. You have to put it in. It's really easy to just rely on our biases and our preconceived notions, just have our armchair uh, critiques and just say, oh, you know, all religion's phony or, oh, all, you know, because here's what a lot of people do, because Christianity is false. A lot of people, they, and especially in the Anglosphere, uh, in the English speaking world, they have a negative um, relationship or history with Christianity. They've come to see that Christianity is false, that Christianity, the Bible contradicts itself, and the Bible's not a preserved revelation from God. And so then from that, they universalize that experience and they say, well, that must mean all religion is phony and all religion is false. You've only gone through one religion, right? You have to give other sort of claimants a chance and be fair and develop sort of criteria and be ready to accept it or deny it based on that criteria, right? A lot of people, you know, you'll ask them, okay, what would you need to see? If you can't answer this question, what would you need to see in order to believe in God? Or what would you need to see in order to believe that a religion were true? Most people can't answer it because they've already made up their minds. And some people who are honest will actually say, it doesn't matter what you show me. Well then, thank you, I just saved my breath. But there's a lot of people who actually believe that, but they don't say it or they don't admit it. They'll act like they're very skeptical and they'll act like, you know, this, that, the third. It's like, no, it's like, if, you, if you're not ready to accept anything, you haven't even thought about what you would accept or what could possibly change your mind, then you're not being sincere. You're not being sincere. So everybody, you know, as, as intellectual people, as human beings who are here and have a short amount of time on earth and are trying to figure all this stuff out, you owe it to yourself to be sincere, right? Because the consequences of being wrong are, are, are kind of big, right? It's kind of a big deal, okay? And I'm not, you know, a fire and brimstone sort of preacher, but like, let's just imagine that you're wrong, right? <laughs> Eternal damnation is like kind of a big thing, right? You would want to at least have certainty or reasonable probable certainty, right? To be able to say, you know what, I checked it out and whatever, I don't think it's for me or it doesn't make sense or whatever. A lot of people don't get that far. They just dismiss it out of hand due to one bad experience, due to one, you know, phony religion or phony claimants and things like that. No, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to think about it, be honest about it, and to investigate.